Okay, so here we are learning target 2A. Going to run through these examples that deal with obtaining information from the graph of a function. Example A is asking us f of 0. So before we start this, let's just remember that when we see f of x, obviously the thing inside the parentheses is an x value and the entire f of x expression is a y value. So when you see something like f of 0 equals, they are asking you for the value of y. Remember f of x, in this case f of 0, that's the same as a y value. They're asking you for the value of y when x equals 0. The value in parentheses is an x value. The entire f of whatever is a y value. So all this question is asking you to do is to go to the graph of this function, find out where the point on the graph is where x is equal to zero and return or output the y value at that point. So x equals zero, there's zero, there's one pi, there's two pi, there's three pi, there's four pi. So clearly x equals zero here. Remember x equals zero also means this entire vertical line, which of course is the y-axis, y-axis, the y-axis is the set of all points where x equals zero. This point is zero comma four. This point here is zero comma negative two. This point here at the origin obviously is zero, zero. So again, zero, 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 all along the y-axis are all of our points where the x coordinate is zero. And of course, on this graph, this graph intersects that y axis at this point right here. That is also known as the y intercept of this function. And the y intercept is zero comma four. So again, when x is zero, when x is zero, the output value, the y value, the f of zero value is four. The answer to this question is four. Again, all we did is we went to the point on the graph where x equals zero, and we found out what the y value is at that point. That is example A. In example B here, we are asked what f of three halves pi is, or three pi over two. Three halves pi and three pi over two are exactly the same thing. So example B is very similar to example A. We are given, once again, we are given an x value. Value in parentheses is always an x value. That x value is three pi over two. And we are being asked what the value of f of three pi over two is. Remember that that is a y value. So we are just being asked for the y value when x equals three pi over two. In other words, we are being asked to find the point on this graph where x is three pi over two and figure out what the y value is at that point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the x-axis and we're gonna see that we've got a two here and a four here, two pi, four pi. Halfway between the two pi and the four pi would be three pi. Halfway between the zero pi and the two pi would be one pi. Halfway between zero and one pi would be one half pi, which is exactly the same as pi over two. One half pi is exactly the same as pi over two. So this is one half pi, one pi. This guy right here would be one and a half pi, which is also the same as three pi over two. Three over two equals 1.5. So three over two pi is exactly the same as 1.5 pi. And remember that three over two pi is exactly the same as 3 pi over 2. So we've got 3 pi over 2 right there. So again, this vertical line here, this vertical line here is the set of all points where x equals 3 pi over 2. And now we just need to find out where our curve intersects that vertical line because we will know that where the curve intersects that vertical line, our x value will be 3 pi over 2. And this point right here is where the curve intersects that vertical line x equals 3 pi over 2. And of course, the y value at this point right here is 0. We are on the x-axis. The y values of all points on the x-axis are 0. So we know that when x equals 3 pi over 2, we get an output for the function. The f of 3 pi over 2 value will be 0. In other words, we're talking about the point 3 pi over 2 comma 
zero. This is the x value. This is the f of that x value. So this is the x value. X value is three pi over two, and this is f of three pi over two. Um, that also is known as the x-intercept. Anytime your y value equals zero, we are talking about the x. Let me get rid of that negative there. That looks a little confusing. We are talking about the x-intercept. So once again, remember that when you have zero comma whatever, we are talking about the y-intercept. Anytime x is zero, we're on the y-axis. So if we're talking about a point on a curve where our x-coordinate is zero, we are talking about the point on the curve that is on the y-axis, that lies on the y-axis. So if we see zero comma whatever, we're talking about the y-intercept. And if we see whatever comma zero, we are talking about the x-intercept. All of the y-values on the x-axis are zero. In example C, we've got f of three pi. So again, it's the same situation here. We are given an x value. The x value is in parentheses. The x value in this case is three pi. And we are being asked to determine what the function's value is or what the y value is at x equals three pi. So again, they're asking us what y equals when x equals three pi. So we're gonna do the same thing we did in the last two cases. We're gonna go to 1 pi, 2 pi, we're going to go to 3 pi. There's 3 pi. That's where x equals 3 pi. But remember, this entire line, all of the x values are 3 pi. That vertical line is the vertical line x equals 3 pi. And if we look at where our curve intersects that vertical line, we can see it happens right here. So this is the point at which our x value will be 3 pi. And now we just need to figure out what the y value will be, which just consists of going over there to the y-axis and seeing that this point right here is going to be 3 pi comma negative 4. So when the input x is 3 pi, the output y is negative 4. In example d, the question is asking us for the domain of f. The domain of f, that's what we need here. Remember, domain is all of the allowable x values, all of the possible x values, all of the allowable x values, all of the x values that make up the graph of the function. Um, domain, domain are the x values. Range, as we are asked in item E here, range are the y or f of x values. So in the case of example D, we are being asked for all of the x values that appear on this curve, all of the x values uh, that this curve sort of covers. And all of the x value that this curve covers are from x equals zero over to x equals four pi. All of the points on this curve, there's the point where x equals zero, there's the point where x equals pi over two, there's the point where x equals pi, here's the point where x is just between pi and three pi over two, and of course there's the point where x is just over, let's say five halves pi, here's the point where x is 3.5 pi or seven halves pi, over here's where x equals four pi, and then we end, we have no more of the curve to the right of four pi, and we have no more of the curve to the left of zero pi. So all of the x values that appear on this curve are from zero to four pi. Now, how do we write the domain? That will really depend on your teacher's preferences. There are several ways that we could write. We could write the domain in terms of an inequality. We could say zero is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to four pi. That's one way we could talk about the domain. We could talk about the domain in set notation, which might look something like, uh, like this. Uh, you might even see a little fancy bracket around this. You might even see uh, that the domain is all values of x such that, that's what this vertical bar means, such that x is between, inclusive of, and between 0 and 4 pi, 0 and 4 pi. So again, that's x, and then this vertical bar that uh, means such that it's just an indication that you are about to like specify or limit the values of x that are part of the domain, and then we would just write this 
inequality that x is between 0 and 4 pi. We could also write this in interval notation, which would be a rectangular bracket, 0, comma, 4 pi. And again, this, these all mean the same thing. These all mean that the domain of this function goes from x equals 0 up to x equals 4 pi. And 0 and 4 pi are included because there are points on this graph where x equals 4 pi. There's the point 4 pi comma 4, and there's the point 0 comma 4. Uh, so again, 0 and 4 pi are x values on this curve, which means that 0 and 4 pi must be included in the domain of this curve. In item E, in item E, we have what is the range of f. So remember that range means, whereas domain was all the x values, range is all of the y values. And it should be fairly clear that the y values on this graph range from a low of negative 4. That's the minimum value of y on this graph. And the maximum value of y on this graph are at these points here, 1, 2, 3 points. We hit that maximum value of 4. So the range of f, and again, there's multiple ways that we could write this. I'm going to go ahead and write this, uh, that f of x is... Uh, greater than negative 4 and less than positive 4. So negative uh, 4 is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to 4. However, you could, once again, you could express the range in interval notation like this. You could express the range in a few different ways. Um, but either of those would be perfectly fine to express the range. In item f, we are asked to list all the intercepts of this curve. Starting with the y-intercept, remember the y-intercept is where the curve hits the y-axis. It's also the point at which x equals 0. We've discussed that previously. And it is this point right here where the curve hits the y-axis. So our y-intercept, uh, we can write this in one of two ways. We can write 0, 4. That's the actual co coordinates of the y-intercept. We could also just say that y equals 4 is the y-intercept. Now, this curve has several x-intercepts, as evidenced by the fact that the curve hits the x-axis at 1, 2, 3, 4 points. So remember, the x-intercepts are where the curve hits the x-axis. That should be fairly obvious. And then we have y-values of 0 at those points. So again, we could write the x-intercepts as, let me zoom out here a little bit, we could write the x-intercepts as, uh, what's that first one there? That first one there is pi over 2 or 1 half pi. Let me scroll down just a little bit so we can get a little bit more of this. There we go. So we have an x-intercept of pi over 2 comma 0. Uh, again, remember that the y value at all the x-intercepts is going to be 0. We could also write that as x equals pi over 2. We have another x-intercept here at 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to write this over here so I don't have to scroll down. 3 pi over 2 comma 0. We could also write that the x-intercept there is 3 pi over 2. Uh, we have another x-intercept here between 2 and 3, halfway between 2 and 3 is 2.5 pi or 5 halves pi, 5 halves pi, or 5 pi over 2, same thing. Uh, we could write that as x equals 5 halves pi. And then finally, our last intercept is going to occur over here, halfway between the 3 pi and the 4 pi. Halfway between 3 and 4 is 3.5 pi, also known as 7 halves pi. Where can I squeeze that in? I'm going to squeeze it in over here. 7 halves pi comma 0, also known as x equals 7 pi over 2. Most of the time when you're being asked for intercepts, the question or the teacher is, is going to want just the y value or the x value at that intercept. If the question says, what are the coordinates of the y intercept, of course, you can answer in full coordinate form. But either of those should suffice. In item G, we have how many times does the line y equals 2 intersect the graph? Well, remember, it's very important to remember that if you have a line in the form x equals some number, this is a vertical line. We talked about that with this dotted vertical line and this dotted vertical line. Anytime you see x equals some number, that is the set of all points. Remember, this does not indicate just a single point. It's the set of all points where your x value equals this number. So on this curve, just to give you one more example, 
if I were to draw a vertical line here where my x value is 4 pi, I'm not just talking about the one point on the axis where x equals 4 pi. I'm talking about all of the points where the x coordinate is 4 pi. This point, and 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 all these points. If I were to fill in all these points, you would start to see I'm forming a vertical line. All of these points have an x coordinate of 4 pi. So x equals 4 pi is the vertical line at x equals 4 pi. y equals some number, that is a horizontal line. So for instance, let's look at this line here and all of the points on it, this horizontal line and all the points on it, we should be able to see that every single one of those points has a y value of negative three. y equals negative three. So when I write y equals negative three, I am talking about the set of all points, the set of all points where y equals negative three. That is a horizontal line at y equals negative three. This question asks us about the line y equals two. So what I'm going to do is, I'll just go to where y equals two on the, uh, sorry, on the y axis, y equals two right here. So I am talking about this horizontal line. I'm gonna draw that in a different color so that it stands out a little bit better. There's the line y equals two and I, can now answer this question. This question says, how many times intersect the graph? How many times does y equals two intersect the graph? It intersects the graph once, twice, thrice, quadrice. That's not a word, I'm just kidding. Maybe it is a word, I don't know. That's four times. One, two, three, four times. The answer to this question is four. The graph of our function here intersects that line y equals two at four different points, four times. In item H, for what value or values of X, so the question is asking us for values of X, where F of X equals negative four. Bringing up a couple of things we've talked about already, remember that F of X equals something is exactly the same as Y equals something. F of X is a Y value. When you see the expression F of X, thing in parentheses is an X, the whole, whole thing is a Y. This whole thing, f of x, can be replaced with y, and therefore this question is asking us for what values of x does y equal negative four? Well, again, y equals negative four, just like we talked about in example g, y equals negative four is just a horizontal line, horizontal line at y equals negative four. That's what y equals negative four means. So what I'm going to do, and again, I'll change colors here, I'm gonna draw a horizontal line so I just drew a horizontal line at y equals negative four, and I can see that the values of x that produce a, so, so let me back up here for one second. Because these two points here and here on the curve, right, those, those uh, troughs there, those minimums there, that point and that point there, those are points on the curve that intersect the line y equals negative four. And therefore, at those two points, obviously because those two points lie on the line, y equals negative four, I know that the y value at those points is negative four. Well, those points also lie on the graph of our function, on the curve. So I know that at those points on the curve, the y value must also be negative four. Those two points lie on the line, y equals negative four, so their y coordinates have to be negative four, and of course, on the curve itself, those same points will also have a y coordinate of negative four. So now all we need to do, remember what the question was asking us, what are the x values at those points? Well, the x value at this point here is pi. So that point right there is pi comma negative four. This point here, the x value is three pi. This tick mark right here is three pi. So at pi comma negative four, and at three pi comma negative four, we have y values or f of x values that equal negative four, which means the answer to this question, which again is asking for the x values, pi, x equals pi, and x equals three pi. Those are the two values of x for which the y value or f of x value will be negative four. In other words, we're just looking for the points of intersection between 
that horizontal line y equals negative 4 and the graph of the function we find those points of intersection we already know that the y values there are negative 4 we just need to return the x values in in item i here for what values of x i'm going to circle that again is f of x greater than zero so once again very very um, simple and efficient to just say well f of x is just a y value so they're really saying y is greater than zero y is positive that's another way that we could think about this y is positive so this question wants to know what values of x will result in a y coordinate that is greater than zero or a y coordinate that is positive keep in mind that when they're talking about positive y's or negative x's or positive and negative x's and y's and whatever it might be anytime you're talking about the signs that's s-i-g-n-s -S, not s-i-n-e-s -E the signs positive negative on your x and y coordinates it's really a question about quadrants quadrant one quadrant two quadrant three quadrant four remember that your sign schemes are positive positive that's a positive x positive y all of the points in quadrant one have both positive x values and y values in quadrant two we have negative x values and positive y values in quadrant three we have both negative x and y values both of the x coordinates and the y coordinates are negative and then in quadrant four we've got the positive negative scheme all of our x coordinates will be positive all of our y coordinates will be negative so when a question is asking us about y is greater than zero well y is greater than zero in these two quadrants in other words we're talking about everything every part of our graph that is above the x-axis above the x-axis are positive y values below the x-axis are negative y values so this question is simply asking us to go to the graph and find out where the graph is above the x-axis those will produce the positive y values where the graph is above the x-axis and to tell or to figure out what x values will produce those positive y values and the x values that will do that will be determined by the portions of the graph uh, that color will do for now so this portion of the graph that portion of the graph is above the x-axis here's the x-axis above the x-axis all of our y values are positive so this little segment of the graph this little segment of the graph this segment of the graph those are all the segments of the graph where our y values are greater than zero where our y values are positive so now all we need to do is determine what the set of x values is along those portions and that should be very simple because we've already divided the x-axis up into the necessary intervals we can see that from zero pi or just zero to pi over two we get all of those positive y values right this point right here is 0 comma 4 uh, this point right here is let's say pi over 4 comma 3 this point right here is very close to pi over 2 comma 0.5 about all of the points along this first little segment have positive y values and their x values range from 0 to pi over 2 so the first interval the first interval we'll write this in interval notation the first interval is 0 to pi over 2 we are using the square brackets here because this is a closed interval that's just a fancy way of saying that both 0 both an x value of 0 and an x value of ooh sorry sorry this needs to be an open interval my bad that needs to be an open interval uh, just for some clarity there at pi over 2 uh, we should be able to see I'll zoom in here at pi over 2 this point right here where X is pi over 2 that point is pi over 2 comma 0 that was one of the X intercepts that we discussed previously because the Y value there is 0 the Y value is also not greater than 0 because 0 is not greater than 0 so you are not at this point 
You are not above the x-axis. You are not into the territory where your y values are positive. You are at a point where your y value is zero, which means that pi over two cannot be included in this interval. We have to, we, we can get infinitely close to pi over two, right? We could do this point and 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 this point. We can get very, very close to pi over two, but we can't get to pi over two because if we get to pi over two, our y values will no longer be greater than zero. Our y values will be equal to zero at pi over two. So again, we need the open interval, the soft parentheses here. The next interval where we hop up above the x-axis, in other words, where we get those positive y values is gonna be from this location over to this location. And of course, that goes from three pi over two all the way over there to five pi over two. This is three pi over two. This is four pi over two. That's just two pi. This is five pi over two. This is six pi over two. Multiple ways that you can determine that this point here is an x value of five pi over two two, but we are going from three pi over two to five pi over two. So that will be the next interval, three pi over two, five pi over two. And once again, we need open intervals here because at both an x value of three pi over two and an x value of five pi over two, y will be equal to zero and therefore y will not be greater than zero. We will not satisfy the inequality given in the question. And then finally, we have one last little segment of the graph here that is above the x-axis. And in that case, we are going from seven pi over two all the way over there to uh, four pi. So from seven pi over two to four pi, let's jot that down. We're going four, uh, sorry, seven pi over two over to four pi. In this case, we need open interval on the seven pi over two, because remember at seven pi over two, our y value is zero. In other words, our y value is not greater than zero. But over there at four pi, we are producing a positive y value. So we can include four pi in this interval. In other words, we have a closed interval here. Four pi is included in the x values that will make y greater than zero. And then what we're gonna do between these is we're gonna put some u's indicating the union of these sets. In other words, x could be between zero and pi over two, not including pi over two, or x could be between three pi over two and five pi over two, not inclusive, or x could be between seven pi over two and four pi, including four pi, but not including seven pi over two. So those are the x values, that interval notation there represents all of the different x values where your y values will be positive.